Hello and welcome to News Click. News Click brings a series of interviews on the three years of Modi government, and today we are going to discuss about the education. To discuss the issue, we have with us Abha Dev Habib, a former executive council member of the Delhi University and also a professor in Miranda House. Abha, welcome to News Click. So uh, we look at these three years of the government, and how do you assess it? Uh, what has been the situation in terms of academic policies, the policies of the government, and interventions? uh yeah i see three important um, uh developments one is that in terms of educational policies there is a greater push towards commercialization whether we look at uh, new education policy uh, draft policy or we look at uh, what has happened in terms of announcements through budget speeches of arun jetli for example in 2016 17 they announced uh, creation of higher education funding agency without uh, discussing this matter at any platform and uh, this year they announced uh, the scheme of autonomous colleges uh, the other development is uh, you know there is a assault on the autonomy of the system of various organizations for example university system uh, the moment uh, modi sarkar came in uh, they imposed choice based credit system taking away autonomy of the universities to create their own syllabi uh, uh, and course work and um, uh, there have been continuous uh, attack in terms of uh, uh, administrative autonomy uh, i want to um, clarify here that uh, uh, in terms of autonomous colleges the autonomous colleges is a scheme where they do not have really um, academic autonomy uh, they will also have to have choice based credit system and so on and so forth and in terms of administrative autonomy i am sure in terms of administrative autonomy also they will not have the freedom however they will have financial autonomy which means that they can uh, raise the fee and um, also um, uh, give courses in self financing mode yeah so otherwise there is no autonomy uh, with the institutions to run their own programs to under uh to think about course work and so on and so forth the third thing which has happened is continuous attack on university systems um whether it was um, uh, we have seen how hyderabad university was under the scanner how abvp has become instrumental in creating ruckus in the systems and where um, uh, individuals or uh, groups of people are labeled uh, anti national and so on and so forth and uh, there is an attack on student um, unions and this is happening because i think uh, the government understands that the resistance will come from the student unions today the after um, uh, reservation policy after the inclusion policy the complexion of the student movement today has changed and it has um, students from all walk uh, from uh, marginalized section which understand the importance of public funded institutions so ab let's go into these three points separately uh the first point that you raise is a important point that is the privatization of education and we have seen ppp model developing yeah. over few years in last few years can you throw some more light on it vis-a-vis -vis the new education policy and how is it how is the government moving forward on it uh see when uh, there was lot of opposition on the draft new education policy that was um withdrawn however it is being implemented through announcements and so on and so forth in terms of uh, education policies uh, nda sarkar is quite a extension of upa2 if you look at the six education bills which were stopped by rajya sabha once again we see that um, uh, the prime minister for example has asked niti ayog to the look into a foreign education bill uh, in terms of their use of ranking system you know ranking uh, whether it is nirf or whether it is nac has become a big thing in the country today and uh, if you look at the draft new education policy one of the important recommendations there is that ranking or rating will be used to give greater autonomy to the institutions which are doing well autonomy one has to read in terms of financial autonomy uh, and for weeding out those institutions which are not performing well uh recently uh, you hear that uh, you know times of india carried a news report wherein the mhrd has said that 11 universities are not performing well and the funny thing was that uh, it it was asking ugc to come up with the criteria through which it could announce universities not performing so it first announced that these 11 universities are ill and then is asking ugc to come up with the criteria so how i mean in both the in both cases whether you are performing well and therefore you are given 
financial autonomy or you are closed down or your land is given now to NGOs and so and so forth or private players to run uh, the institution. In both the ways, actually what you are doing is commercializing higher education. You are giving it to the private pockets. Uh, so this is one big agenda, whether it is foreign uh, education bill or whether through these uh, things, ratings, and, ratings and rankings, you want to actually further the whole thing of commercialization of higher education. In fact, the third point which I said was that, you know, uh, there is an attack on the student uh, movement and uh, this whole thing of when the JNU SU was fighting, uh, um, stopping off non-net okay, fellowship, UGC movement. Yeah, Occupy UGC movement, uh, stopping off non-net fellowship, you see that there is an attack on JNU SU um, and Kanahia was arrested and everybody knows about it. Through that also, they want to achieve the agenda of commercialization and I want to tell you why. Why I think so? Because in many TV channels where I went, I heard BJP peop, um, uh, MPs or MLAs or um, some supporter shouting that why we should fund universities, such professors. And why should and, we fund politics? Yeah, yeah. Why we uh, fund politics or why should we fund JNU, which is a, um, a you know, a, a space which is creating anti-nationals. So once again, you want to close down. You want to create an impression in the minds of the uh, in the minds of the people that these universities are not functioning well. That they are actually becoming places of anti-national activities. And why should taxpayers' money go and uh, should be used for funding of these universities? So once again, you want to create an argument. Uh, for closing down higher education institutions and privatize um, these places. The sec uh, actually, the second question that I was going to ask about your second point, yeah. and the point you have raised about uh, financial autonomy. Saint Stephen's College has been against this autonomous, uh, ha has been active on this movement continuously, resisting this move of the administration. Can you throw some more light on that? Because we have seen high fee structures now being imposed in different universities. The recent example that comes to my mind is of Punjab, uh, of Punjab where students have been on streets, they have been beaten up, 66 students have been charged with sedition, sedition charges. Sedition charges. So, can you throw some more light on that? Uh, see, I think the attempt is to decrease the gap between the fee structures of the private and the public. So, one of the ways is to give financial autonomy uh, to um, increase, for example, in IITs also, if you look at last five years, the fees has been increased systematically. And today, uh, per semester, they are paying, or per year, they are paying 2.5 lakhs, close to 2.5 lakhs per year, rather than uh, paying 30,000. So you want to reduce the gap between public and private in terms of their fee structure also. So uh, making colleges autonomous, asking them to raise fee, and um, uh, you know one of the recommendation of seventh pay commission is that autonomous units have to raise 70 per, uh, 70 70% the government will contribute 30% should come from the institution which will mean finally burdening of the student similar uh, on the ppp model bilkul. so the uh, thing is that the um, government wants to shift the focus from institutional uh, grants to institutional loans through hifa it wants to shift uh, the whole thing of subsidized education to student loan. So that is a continuous shift. So whether you will look at the autonomous college scheme or whether you will look at what will happen to HIF, um, funding through HIFA, it, I mean very clearly Arun Jaitley has said and uh, subsequently many articles have come, how uh, if you want to open a nanotechnology lab, the uh, government will not give you grant. You can take funds from HIFA which can be paid back through student loan. Uh, the example is of an IIT where you need 100 crore grant. So instead of getting grant, you take funds, loans uh, through HIFA and you can inbuild that uh, uh, through student fee and pay back in 10 years or 12 years. So you raised the point about ABVP and I, uh, I feel it personally that it's not only ABVP but they also motivated appointments that have taken place in last three years. We saw how FTII, there was FTII, a four month strike. Then now we have a vice chancellor in Jawaharlal University who is not ready, ready to meet even the professors and is passing AC meeting, uh, whatever he wants to, even when the teachers and students are opposing it. So how do you see that, I mean the systematic attack on co-structures 
uh, administrative functioning. See, if you have an administrative head who is not going to respond to what the students and teachers want, does not want to take forward uh, decisions in a democratic function, uh, through democratic functioning, but is following orders, is basically hollowing the system from within, the autonomy from within, creating an environment where you uh, manufacture consent. And this we had seen, in fact, uh, during Professor Dinesh Singh's tenure in Delhi University, when UPA 2 was pushing semester system, uh, then it pushed FYUP in Delhi University through similar means. And uh, this is very unfortunate because uh, then the university ceased to be uh, universe spaces where uh, you, you have free thinking. rational thinking. Rational and free thinking. I mean, since we have discussed all these points and we see that the situation is really worse, but there's also a movement which is building up and I think it's the resistance that students and teachers have shown yeah. that one should take forward. So, uh, how do you, what's the way ahead actually? The way ahead is uh, joint movements by students and teachers and I think we should reach out to parents because if um, commercialization of uh, school education has already, privatization has taken place. With a drastic budget cut. Uh, there is a drastic budget cut. In fact, uh, we are not even back to what was the funding towards education in 2013-14. Uh, there has been such a drastic uh, budget cut. But uh, one thing, one warning which we have to, you know, we have to um, uh, go to the parents and inform them about this development that if higher education is dismantled, then there is no hope for the, uh, their, uh, um, uh, 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 their kids. I mean, there is no hope for the next generation. And uh, this will create stratification, further stratify the society and uh, creating um, uh, those who can afford education and get white collar jobs and others who will be there in the service sector. So we need to reach out to parents and uh, ask them to join the movement and make a combined joint movement. This is the only way ahead. Thanks a lot Abha and as these things proceed we will be coming back to you on such yeah. issue. Thanks Thank a lot. Thank you for watching News Click.